I'm Jada Franson and this is my weekly roundup. A Muslim man stabbed another Muslim man inside a mosque where both Muslim men pray regularly. Or according to the media, man storms London mosque and stabs worshipper in the neck. Horror as knifeman runs into Regent's Park mosque and stabs man as he calls worshippers to prayer. Breaking, man storms mosque and stabs Muslim worshipper in the neck. I hate to be pedantic, but those headlines don't seem to marry up with the facts. But then again, who cares about facts when there is literally an open goal opportunity to scream Islamophobia? How sick do you have to be to enter a mosque and stab a man who is in his 70s in the neck as he recites the call to prayer? Fortunately, his injuries aren't life-threatening. A sickening attack and it's time this country takes Islamophobia and far-right extremism seriously. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's just some idiot on Twitter. And you would be right. But how about these idiots? Deeply angry that places of worship are targets for hate of any kind, including murder. Hashtag Islamophobia, hashtag Regent Park. Note, attack on a Muslim isn't immediately classed hashtag terrorism. But when it's the reverse, i.e. hashtag Muslim attacking others, hashtag terrorist is the bandwagon jumped on, hashtag just saying. Despite the fact that Dr. Shola is a solicitor, she doesn't seem too fussed about attention to detail. And here is what Muslim Labour MP Zara Sultana had to say. I send my love to my Muslim brothers and sisters at London Central Mosque. After the rise in Islamophobic attacks in the UK and hours since a gunman fired on a shisha bar in Germany, I know Muslim communities are on edge. Together, we must combat racist hate with all our strength. I guess it isn't too shocking that a Labour MP would say something misleading. And of course, Lord Nazir Ahmed couldn't resist spouting this absolute dribble. A white terrorist attacked the Moezin as he was performing Akamar for the Asra prayer at Regent's Park Mosque in London. Please take precautions and ensure that there is security in every mosque during prayers. If you're wondering where you've seen that guy before, he's the former Labour politician, the first Muslim life peer based in East Boultrey Road, Rotherham, and the guy that's due to stand trial in July after being charged with indecently assaulting a boy, two counts of attempted rape against a girl under 16, and buggery against the same boy aged under 11. That guy. But the false narrative didn't stop there. These two men make it very clear that the white European man was not known to the mosque. The unknown individual, not known to us, uh, um, it's like white European background. Police also came, they arrested the, the suspect and then the sheikh himself was taken to, to the hospital. I believe he's in good condition now. Yes, yes. alhamdulillah. And this is really very strange. We don't know anything about the identity of this person or what the motivation is. However, this guy clearly didn't get the memo and told the BBC that the attacker did not run in off the street, but in fact, the Muslim man had been worshipping there regularly for six months and was considered vulnerable by other worshippers. This individual has been visiting the mosque over the last six months. Uh, they had no intel, to my understanding, to indicate that he was... Um, uh, a threat. There so are this doesn't sound like yeah. a random attacker. Yeah. Someone, it's not someone who's coming off the street and done no, no, this. It's this someone, someone who's, who's, who's known to worshippers. And, and, you know, some people felt that he was a bit vulnerable as well in the past. He's had issues. I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I would suggest that verses such as Surah 8 verse 12, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve, therefore strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them, or any of the 108 verses that speak of waging violent war against non-Muslims probably didn't do much to help this vulnerable individual's mental health. But the Muslim community don't seem to want to focus on that. They simply see this as a rare opportunity to boast that this time it wasn't us, it was a white man. Okay, so an imam, I think she means imam, has been stabbed in Regent's Park Mosque by a white man and you're trying to tell me that racism and Islamophobia do not exist in this country? Not terror related, he had a knife in a mosque and stabbed an innocent man in the neck while making the call to prayer. Two words, white privilege. This one has to be my favourite. So a man pretending to be a Muslim for several days and stabbing a 70 year old in a mosque isn't terror related. The West are cowards. Pretending to be a Muslim for several days, six months, Who's really counting? The fact of the matter is, he is a Muslim. 
Just because he is white doesn't mean you can throw him back to us and call this a racist, Islamophobic, white privilege terror attack. He was one of yours. Well, are they going to be treating this terrorist like this and giving him respect? Given that Allah has called upon all Muslims to fight them until there is no more fitna, which means disbelief and polytheism, i.e. worshipping others besides Allah, and the religion worship will all be for Allah alone in the whole of the world. That's right here in Surah 8 verse 39. Now, you're going to have to accept that a significant portion of the world's population are white, so to achieve Islamic world domination will involve converting the white folk. If they then start acting out verses of the Quran on innocent elderly worshippers, I would suggest you look a little less at the colour of their skin for motive and a little more at the violent, murderous and genocidal scriptures that they are reading in your holy book. Get ready for a supersized dose of tequila. A headline caught my eye this week. Majid Nawaz takes down Cooler who thinks women are weaker than men. Admittedly, I was more than a little sceptical, but I thought I'd take a look. Are judges right to keep UK law separate from Sharia? I say yes. Here we go, right off the bat, Majid starts his impending takedown by stating that he doesn't want UK judges imposing Sharia law. Islam Sharia law is cast from the words of Muhammad called Hadith his actions called Sunnah and the Quran, which he dictated. In Surah 5 of the Quran itself, we read that Muslims must comply with Sharia law. Verse 48, and we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, confirming that which preceded it of the scripture and as criterion over it. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed and do not follow their inclinations away from what has come to you of the truth. To each of you, we prescribed a law and a method. Now, I happen to agree with Majid. I believe that Sharia law has no place in the UK. And in fact, I would shut down every single Sharia court across Great Britain immediately. But I am not a Muslim. Ali, tell us what you think. Um, hi, Majid. How are you doing? Thanks for taking my call. Yep. Um, I think, Majid, you know, I, I don't know, you know, you, you sound very Muslim, you are a Muslim guy, but I think you, you are a very big critic of Islam. You, you, you don't like Islamic laws, you don't like Islamic Sharia, you don't like... I, I feel as if, you know, there's a problem with you and Islam. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, right. I mean, you know that... You see, You're right, I, I want reform, like... Ali. I want reform. I don't think it's right, for example, that a woman gets half the inheritance of a man. Do you think that's right? No, it's, look, I mean, Islamic law, in Islam, woman has got plenty of rights. No, no, hold on, hold on. Islam, I asked you a question, Ali. I don't think yeah. it's right that in the Quran, in the Quran itself, it states that a woman has half the inheritance of a man. Do you agree that a woman should only get half the inheritance of a man? Of course, because when she gets married, or, or when, she, when, when, when she gets married, usually, she gets the half from the husband as well. Yeah. So, so you agree that a woman should only have half the inheritance of, so a sister should only have half inheritance of her brother? Of course, of course. Yep. Well, Majid is now referring to Surah 4 verse 11 of the Quran, which states, Allah instructs you concerning your children for the male what is equal to the share of two females. So women are entitled to half of what a man is entitled to. Do I think that's fair? Not really. But I am not a Muslim. Do you think a wife, do you think a wife should obey her husband? She has to obey her husband because yeah. husband has got, you know, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's a hadith, that, you know, if God would have ordered anyone to bow to anybody else, to bow, to bow, him, to bow, yeah. Yeah, to bow, yeah, yeah to bow. Yeah. To bow anyone, it would have been a wife would have told to uh, bow to her husband. Yeah. You know, so that's, so that's let, that's let me explain that for listeners. The hadith is actually, if God had commanded anyone to bow to anyone other than God, he would command the wife to bow to her husband. Of course. You endorse yes. that. I endorse, what do you yep. mean? Everybody has got to endorse. That's a hadith. That's a very yep. famous hadith. I just love that guy's reaction. Majid asks the man if he agrees with the hadith, which are the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, as if the guy is going to say no to that. Whilst I do agree that a wife should respect her husband, I think bowing to him is a bit much. But then... I am not a Muslim. What about what about the Quran where it says that a husband has the right to beat his wife? No, if she, if she if disobeys. Got, yeah, if she 
it is away, he can only be it as then the blood should not come and it should not be bruised. Like, you know, like you tap your hand. Oh, you know, how, like, how, how kind of you. So it's okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood? No, not blood and it shouldn't get bruised. Okay, so it's okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood or bruise her? No, but, but you see... Hold on, Ali. Is it okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood or bruise her? Of course, yeah. Like, you know, you tap, you know, you, you, you tap somebody, you know, you, you just say... How, how, how do you say, you know, you tap someone, you know, on, on the shoulder or something? Humiliate you know, them, you mean? Up. Bully and humiliate you your wife because the passage continues to say, and then, and then, until... You can beat her, and of course, with Ali's caveat, as long as you don't draw blood or bru bruise her until she returns to obedience. So you keep tapping her on the shoulder, right? Until she decides to obey you up. again, yeah? It's, it's, it's like a wake-up call. Hang on, wake up, yeah. wake up. Yeah, wake up, obey me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. she has to obey. She has to obey. Know, what do you think? You, you, you don't expect. You want your wife. To Majid has now moved on to Surah 434 of the Quran, which states Men are in charge of women, so righteous women are devoutly obedient. But those wives from whom you fear disobedience, first advise them, then if they persist, forsake them in bed, and finally strike them. I do not agree with men hitting women. And I have publicly campaigned against the violence permitted in the Quran towards women for many years. But I am not a Muslim. Does she have the right to divorce you, Ali? Does you, so if you're tapping your Ali, if you're tapping your wife on the shoulder, as you've said yeah. it, right, to force her to obey you, you keep you keep hitting her without bruising her or bleeding her. What if she wants to divorce you? Are you going to grant her the right to leave you, or does only a man have the right to divorce? No, no, no. no. You see, in in Sharia, like you said, you know, you just said that you know there's a, a thing called khula where she can demand her divorce, right? From a third party. So I'm a third party, yeah, yeah, but what about she if she divorce. wants to divorce herself? You've got the right to divorce her just by saying talaq, right? Three times. No, 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 no. I don't believe that. I don't believe in talaq, three talaq. There is nothing like no, that. No, no, in three there separate is... sittings even. Fine. But yeah. you can still pronounce divorce, yeah? Yeah, you can pronounce Right, but she can't, because... yeah? Kula is a procedure through which a woman can divorce her husband in Islam. If the husband doesn't consent to the divorce, a woman has to go to a third party. By contrast, if a Muslim husband wants to divorce his wife, he can do so by simply saying the word talak, which is the Arabic word for divorce, three times in oral, written or electronic form. In accordance with Sharia law, triple talak grants a husband an instant divorce. Look, a man has got an upper hand over the woman in Islam, right? Yeah, but the okay. woman has got more right. Yeah. I've got more right as well. Okay, so I, I, after everything you've just described and all of your answers to my questions, are you seriously, seriously trying to convince me that the that Majid, me, and all my listeners out there are going to now keep a, keep a straight face when you utter the sentence that despite all of what you've just said, a woman still has more rights in Islam than a man? Woman has got more right. Obviously, she's not. She's so not you can right hit her. To... She can't divorce you. She gets half the inheritance of a man, but she still has somehow has more rights than a man does. Look, Majid, have you have you read? You know, you are the best planner. I am the best planner. But Allah is the best planner. Allah is the best of yes, all. Yes, I can quote it to you, you know, in Arabic, you... Ali. Please don't. Yes, I mean, yes. I understand the theology. I'm putting to you human rights questions. Look, human rights, you know, we had made. Where is the human rights when all these things are happening? Right. Now, whilst I am certainly not an advocate for divorce, I am opposed to this two-tier system which grants women very little rights, but I am not a Muslim. So, so tell, me tell me this. Tell me this. Can a woman... Uh, so, if she, if she can't divorce you and you're hitting her without drawing blood or bruising her, can, can she lead you in prayer? She can't lead you in prayer, no. No. Right. No. So, she can't lead you in prayer... Which explains why there's no single female mosque imam in Britain. She 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 can't do anything if you're hitting her without bruising her or making her bleed. If she wants to divorce you, she can't do that. She gets half the inheritance of a man, and you're trying to convince me and my listeners that she still has more rights than a man. She has got plenty of rights. No, no, more yeah, rights. You said that. more. You said more rights. Majid says he doesn't agree with the hadith, which state that women cannot lead men in prayer, and therefore cannot become imams. The Bible has a similar verse prohibiting women from becoming priests or pastors. So perhaps Majid should join the Church of England. They seem to have absolutely no problem ignoring that part of God's word. Yeah, yes. You see, Majid, you know, women is a weak, weaker than men, isn't it? Don't women are weaker that. than men, yeah? Of course, of course, they are yeah. weaker, you know? Yeah. Strength-wise, brain-wise, everything. Yeah. You know, how many scientists are there who are women? 
How yeah. many? How many? Uh, tell, tell me how many scientists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many prophets are there in women? Yeah. You know, there is, there's no prophets in women, right? Yeah. The caller rounds up by saying that women are weaker than men, strength-wise and brain-wise. I wonder where he might have got that information from. Maybe from the prophet Muhammad himself who said that women are deficient in intelligence. The women asked, O oh, Allah's apostle, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in the affirmative. He said, this is a deficiency in her intelligence. Do I believe that women are deficient in intelligence? <laughs> no, I do not, but I am not a Muslim. And according to Allah, neither is Majid. It is an absolute condition of Allah whom Muslims believe is God, that Majid Nawaz must be faithful to Allah's word and prescribed law. It's also the case that every Muslim should seek to emulate the Prophet Muhammad as he was the perfect human being according to Islam. So, what we have just watched is one of two things. Either Majid, a non-Muslim, telling a devout Muslim all of the things he dislikes about Islam, or, and my money is on this, Majid, a devout Muslim, pretending to be horrified by all of the backwards and barbaric Islamic practices that would shock any Western civilian in order to peddle an entirely false narrative that there is a moderate side to Islam. Look, you cannot call yourself a Muslim and say you're against the Islamic scriptures. The mere suggestion that a person who not only rejects but also denounces the word of Allah and Muhammad is a Muslim is frankly ludicrous. Do not be fooled. This is just a very deceptive ploy to portray a non-existent alternative, moderate Islam. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. If anyone needs any more evidence that Britain is being run as an anti-white, corrupt police state, take a look at this. Good evening, you beautiful patriots. Um, bit of a random video at a weird time of night on a Friday. As you can see, I am in my clothing. Um, just got back in from St. Anne Street Police Station, Liverpool. Five hours I've been sat down there in the uh, waiting room, waiting for Kim. Many of you will know Kim, um, especially my followers, most of you will know Kim, my other half. This morning, she was on her way to work about 10 o'clock. And as she's in traffic, a car next to her catches her eye. So she has a bit of a look and a double, one of them, you know what I mean? Double look, something caught her eye. It's only the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Anna Rothery. Um, if you don't know Anna Rothery, she's now the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. She takes great pride in telling everybody on multiple occasions how proud she is to be the first black female Lord Mayor of Liverpool. She's not really black. <laughs> I think she may be like a granddad, might have been Jamaican, something like that. But <laughs> um, anyway, point being, um, as Kim's had another look and gone, oh shit, it's Anna Rothery. Anna Rothery's put a window down and said, what's your problem? So Kim's gone, I'll tell you what my problem is. And before she could start speaking, Anna Rothery said, I know who you are. I recognise you. I know who you are. So anyway, Kim said, I don't give a shit, basically. Here's what I think of you. This is my problem. You're an anti-white racist. You've protected paedophiles. Fact. Um, Aaron Joe Anderson tipped paedophiles off, um, made them delete all the evidence when, when they knew the police were on the way to raid the house. Another story. But <clears throat> So Kim's given her a bit, um, and she's given her a bit back. Thought nothing of it. She's drove off. She's drove off. Um, eight hours later, the police in an unmarked car have turned up outside her house and nicked her. Won't tell her what she's being charged with. Haven't given her a solicitor. Haven't allowed her a phone call. They won't tell me... Well, they, have, they don't have to tell me any information. They won't tell me anything, which, like I say, within their rights, I suppose, because she's over 18, but they won't tell nobody anything. She hasn't got a solicitor. She hasn't been allowed a phone call. Um, I've got a couple of videos which I've just took from down the station. One of them saying that um, if you've been arrested, you, you're not necessarily entitled to, uh, to entitled to a phone call. And another one of two constables on the way into the station who then said, 
yeah, of course you're allowed a phone call. You're entitled to a phone call. Um, I've had a bit of shit off the police where they were saying, like, basically laughing about it, laughing at me, saying... When I said she's allowed a phone call, they was, like, sniggering and said, oh, it's not America, mate. It's not America, mate. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to obviously wait up, and if she gets out at 1 or 2 in the morning, I'll be straight down to pick her up, but... What are we living in? Please share this video as far and wide as it can go. What kind of country are we living in? She hasn't got out of the car. She hasn't threatened her. She hasn't made any racist remarks. She hasn't swore. She, ha she hasn't done anything. They've come and arrested her on the orders of Anna Rothery. She's in charge. She's the Lord Mayor of, of Liverpool. She's in charge of the police, technically. She has ordered her frontline soldiers, the police, to come down and arrest her. Literally, she went and got her nails done. Came home and police nicked her. Um, like I say, she's been in there six hours now. Don't know if she's going to be out tonight, tomorrow. If she's in court tomorrow morning, Monday morning. Nothing, don't know anything. So please... Um, I don't want to waffle on too much. I just wanted to put this out there and I want everyone to see it. This is the Lord Mayor of a city, a major city in the UK, abusing her power, abusing her power. We've had issues, an issue with this, this woman for a while. Like I say, she's been spotted on videos. I got arrested in Liverpool after getting jumped by Antifa. She was with him, she's on the video. Um, on the Tommy Robinson's MEP campaign in Liverpool, James Goddard was attacked. She was among them. She's on video speaking about us being far-right fascists and racists and we're not welcome here. And um, Joe Anderson, who was with her also, the other mayor of Liverpool, was saying about how proud he was of his city for running the Nazis out. This is what we're living with. This is what I've moved into. I moved here. I moved here to be amongst this. But, um, yeah, I won't ramble again. Um... I won't keep going on. I'll leave it at that. Um, like I say, please, please, please share it. Comment on it. Um, let's get people to see this because it's um, whether you know Kim, you don't know Kim, you like her, you don't like her, whatever, this is an abuse of power. And if it was um, someone well-known, then I'm sure you'd all be sharing it and, and there'd be people kicking off right off about it. But Kim's one of ours. She's one of mine, obviously. But uh, she's one of ours. She's a top, top patriot. Loyal to the cause, loyal to the people in the cause. Um, so let's, I hope she supports it herself that I'm doing this, but let's give her some support and um, get this going around. And hopefully, hopefully, Anna Rothery or the police, Merseyside police, will see it um, and they'll know that they've uh, they've took a wrong person here and it's not going to just be let go. You're abusing your power and we're not going to have it. And that's the end of it. We have actually now got to the point where elected officials are baiting people in the streets, then having them arrested. This young woman has had her home raided. She was arrested, held in a cold and filthy cell for hours and hours on end, denied a phone call, denied a solicitor. This sounds more like North Korea than the UK. All of that happened because Kim, a young British patriot, dared to look twice at the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. When councillors feel so empowered that they can call out an individual for simply looking at them, then treat the British police force as their own personal mob to go and round them up. It just goes to show how deep the corruption runs within the British establishment. Anna Rothery is behaving like a gangster and it's time she was stopped. Here she is stood with Antifa at a rally against a patriot group. Well, today we've had uh, the Northwest Patriots uh, trying to come to the city to spread their hate. Um, they've come in through Moorfield Street Station or attempted to, but because we're such a strong city and we're so against these people coming here, they didn't make it out of the station once again. Here she is speaking at Stand Up to Racism. But, you know, this is, this is true, all the work that we do is, you know, we've been doing this for decades, my gosh, I was a young, very young girl when I first started fighting against racism and fascism. We all have an opportunity on a day-to-day -day basis to challenge this and tackle it where it hurts. I also was saying, give me Tommy Robinson any day of the week, 
give me the impression and say that I know who they are. And here are the same stand up to racism thugs attacking British patriot and activist James Goddard. Fuck off out of Liverpool. Fuck off out of Liverpool. What are you doing? No. <laughs> no. It's alright, this is what they do, this is the tolerant left. In the words of Donald Trump, we seriously need to drain the swamp and get these mobsters out of office.